Hi everyone, this is Social Change Lecture Number 2, which accompanies the reading by Ritzer, The Magdonaldization of Society, Chapter 1, Pages 1 through 27. Let's start. So, what is the Magdonaldization of Society? As Ritzer writes on page 1, it is the process by which the principles of the fast food restaurant are coming to dominate more and more sectors of American society, as well as of the rest of the world. According to the author, this, this process seems unstoppable, sweeping through previously impenetrable institutions, such as, for example, religion, and regions, for example, European nations and France, which is so opposed to uh, American way of doing things, and other places of the world. Here's a little picture, right, that I really like, and I think it represents what Ritzer writes about. This is a person on the moon holding a McDonald's flag, right? There is no um, area to which McDonaldization cannot get to. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the success of the Golden Arches, because nobody can deny that McDonald is an extremely successful business and business venture. So McDonald's starts in 1955 and now makes about $24.1 billion annually. In the U.S., it is impossible to get further than 107 miles from McDonald's. Can you imagine? Um, and where full stores are unavailable, we have Mac Cafes, and many of them are actually in European nations. But I've seen a couple right here um, in the U.S., um, McDonald's is also embr um, embracing excuse me, new technologies. For example, they have Wi-Fi available, they send promotional emails, they have coupons, blogs, reviews, um, they even have commercials on big stream TVs, video games, and even, can you imagine, they build exercise bikes. And their business model has been so great that it has been adopted by much of the fast food industry. Think about, of course, Burger King, Wendy's, Pizza Cut, Pizza Hut, KFC, Taco Bell, Subway are just a few examples. And even more upscale restaurants are now starting to follow. Think about um, Outback Steakhouse, Chili's, Olive Garden, and Red Lobster. This model further spreads beyond the fast food industry. Um, the methodology that was adopted by McDonald's is now adopted by uh, Toys R Us, Gap, Jiffy Loop, and even Home Depot. And even things like uh, women's Fitness Center's Curves is also following the Golden Arches model. So let's talk a little more about the success of the Golden Arches. It is so successful that this model is spreading to the other countries and almost 50% of McDonald's restaurants are now abroad. Japan, China, Russia and even other countries all over Eastern Europe. Um, other McDonaldized firms outside the fast food industry also have gr had great success globally. Uh, Walmart, for example, is the world's largest retailer with more stores outside the U.S., if you can believe this. Um, other countries have also started to develop their own variations of McDonald's chains. Canada, France, India, Beirut, and even Iraq has their, have their own versions of McDonald's, um, uh, variations of McDonald's chains. And now Ritzer writes that McDonaldization is coming full circle, meaning that other countries with their own McDonaldized institutions start to export them right back here to the U.S. So, for example, they talk about the Body Shop, which is from Great Britain, uh, Preto Menager, uh, from also from Britain, Paulo Campero, which is from Guatemala, and Jollibee, which is actually not too far from where I live. Um, here in Queens, there's one Jollibee, and that is from the Philippines. Outside of food, uh, I'm sorry, food industry, we also have IKEA, right, which is a Swedish-based Dutch-owned uh, furniture chain. Well, not only furniture, but their catalog uh, is reputed to print second largest number of copies in the world, um, just after the Bible. And even in clothing, H&M and Zara are also following the McDonald's models. And they, of course, they're from other countries and they came right here. Let's talk a little bit about McDonaldization in everyday life because the presence of this process is everywhere in our daily lives. I mean, from texting, multitasking, iPhones, iPods, Facebook, YouTube, and even 
even sex became McDonaldized, as I think Rita, Rita writes, that now we have Viagra and even online dating. Uh, McDonald's also occupies a central place not only in the business world but also in American and global popular culture because for example in a small town opening of McDonald's could be seen as an important social event. Um, McDonald's shows up in many movies, music videos, TV shows and even books and for many people who don't live in the US it represents American culture it, it represents America to other cultures I certainly can relate to this because living in Poland I saw you know first commercials that we saw were the commercials of um, of McDonald's and they represented this world that was so unknown to us uh, Ritzer argues that to many people around the McDonald's uh, around the world, excuse me, McDonald's became a sacred institution and on page 8 he writes that it's a place to experience celestial joy, that uh, McDonald's restaurants are cathedrals of consumptions where people practice their consumer religion. Isn't that an interesting um, interesting way of looking at things, right? Um, cathedrals of consumptions when people practice their consumer religion? Wow. McDonald's, of course, has achieved this position because virtually all Americans, as well as others around the world, have passed through its golden age arches in one form or another. I mean, can you really, can you name a person who has never seen or been in a McDonald's? Um, most of us, majority of us, have sit in the restaurants or had been through a drive through drive or have been um, at the Mac Cafe on quite a few occasions, right? Um, and McDonald's, of course, is constantly innovating itself. Like I said, it's now offering Wi-Fi and all these things. It's constantly staying on top of popular, popular culture. Um, Ritzer talks about something called vertical McDonaldization, that all these innovations also affect other aspects of our social life. Uh, Ritzer argues that the demands of McDonald's forced industries that service it to McDonaldize in order to satisfy McDonald's demands. So from potato growing to chicken raising to meat slaughtering, all had to McDonaldize their operations leading to dramatic increases in production, which of course comes with terrible costs. Um, I'm not sure how many of you have seen Food Incorporated, um, a 2009 movie. Um, which describes the conditions in which cows and chickens live and the way they are fed. Meat and poultry that McDonald's uses are more likely to be ridden with disease, while small ranchers have been driven out of business. Um, the other aspect is that millions of people are now forced to work in low-paying, demeaning, demanding, and sometimes quite dangerous jobs, uh, jobs that have no insurance, no health care, no advancement, and no union. While the owners of these uh, companies, uh, the managers and stockholders have profited enormously from this vertical shift. So why and how is McDonaldization so successful? Ritzer argues that this process seems to be in tune with contemporary fast living lifestyle and that there are four key dimensions that lay at the heart of McDonald's success because it offers consumers, workers, and managers efficiency, calculability, predictability, and control. So I, I included this little image, right? Control, predictability, calculability, and efficiency. We'll talk about each of them uh, specifically. So first one, key dimension, the first key dimension is efficiency, meaning optimum method from getting from one point to another. In terms of consumers of McDonald's, it offers best available way to get from being hungry to being full. Everything is pre-designed and all you have to do is follow steps. Then we have calculability, meaning the quantitative aspect of product sold, portion, size and cost, and services that are offered, the time it gets to get the product. In McDonald's, in McDonald's system, quantity has become equivalent to quality. Think about it. A lot of something and its quick delivery means that it has to be good or bigger is better, right? A lot of food for very little money. But think about it. Is it really good for us, right? Is it really such a great deal? Are we losing something on that deal, perhaps? The third key dimension is predictability. Uh, 
um, meaning that it's an assurance that products and services will be the same over time and in all places, that there are no surprises. Think about it. Big Mac here or in Ohio or in Poland will look and taste quite similar. Even workers behave, workers who work for McDonald's, they behave in similar matter. They follow corporate rules, what they do, how they, how they do it, what they say, and even how they look is highly predictable. And I included this little image because I think it talks a little bit about predictability. And the uh, final uh, key dimension of McDonaldization and the final key to its success is control. Because control is everywhere in McDonald's and is exercised over everyone who enters there. I mean, think about it. We have lines, right? The way we stand in McDonald's is kind of controlled. There's limited menu, a few options. There's uncomfortable seats. All are designed to have people buy, eat, and leave. Or even leave before eating, for example, the drive through right? Workers are trained to do a limited number of tasks in precisely the way that they are told them to. They are told to do so. And then there are reinforced by technologies that are used there, right? I mean, think about it. The way that they serve fries, the way that they make these fries, the, um, the way they serve them, the way that they talk to you, it's all highly controlled. However, it's not all so beautiful and peachy keen -y. There is this aspect that um, Ritzer calls irrationality of rationality. So although the McDonald's model offers a lot of powerful advantages, it is not without its own problems. On page 15, Ritter writes that there is irrationality of rationality, or as he calls it, the fifth dimension of McDonaldization. First of all, we can think about it in terms of food. It is dangerous if eaten often, and yet we barely see commercials about that. Of course, now I see that it's changing. I mean, you guys probably remember Super Size Me, right? And how big this movie was and nowadays we see more commercials about eating healthier and so on. Second of all, um, can we really return to the world that existed before this process or are we just romanticizing that world a bit because life on the farm uh, wasn't easy or glamorous at all. It was quite hard. Ritzer argues that due to an increase in people crowding the planet, think about how many of us are there, acceleration of technological innovation, increased pace of life, it is impossible to return to the world of the past. He writes this on page 16. So maybe we should criticize McDonald's I'm sorry, systems for not letting us be more thoughtful, skillful, creative, and well-rounded. Maybe if the world was less McDonaldized, people would be better able to live up to their potential. That's the question he asks on page 16. Then, of course, with all this irrationality of rationality, we should point out some advantages of McDonaldization. On top of their business model, there are programs that benefit society. There are different charities, programs for our teenagers, um, uh, programs that help to keep McDonald's employees in school, hiring senior citizens. Those are all good things that McDonald's are, uh, McDonald's is doing. Some other positive changes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, there's a wider range of goods and services available to a larger portion of population. There is fast global communication that does not depend on geographical allocation. People are able, excuse me, people are able to acquire what they want or need almost instantaneously and get it far more conveniently. And you can find more advantages of McDonaldization on pages 19 to 20. All right, and finally, my question to you is, does this McDonaldization, does it seem like a process that will ever end? Is it a process that can be stopped? Or perhaps put to different use, maybe it can make us better. And I'm going to leave you with this thought um, of what do you think about it. Um, I would suggest you can even write about it um, on a discussion forum or mention something in your blog but that's of course up to you I just wanted to um, point this out I wanted to ask you guys what do you think of this process all right I'll talk to you guys very soon bye